Hi, everyone. Kumar, shall we get started? Maybe, yeah. You can start. OK. So welcome back, everyone. Uh, so this is uh, going to be important for now. I have a bit of a background uh, noise. Somebody is unmute. Uh, I think somebody called Amalan. Could you please mute? OK. I still hear background noise, Amalan. Yeah, thanks. thanks. OK. So let's get started. Yeah? Yeah. So, so now the idea is here that, uh, now that's the most uh, important part here. Uh, Alice is ready, address is ready, and so on. And uh, the idea is that if you want bitcoins, Alice is going to basically reach out to another Bitcoin user who ha who already has some bitcoins by some means. OK, uh, we will come to that part, but we assume that Dave at this point has some bitcoins. And then Dave would receive uh, equivalent uh, amount of, uh, you know, uh, you know, equivalent amount in traditional currency. And then Dave is ready to transfer bitcoins to Alice. And so Dave requires Bitcoin uh, Alice Bitcoin address, which is basically shared by Alice. Now Dave is going to make a transaction. Now we will, uh, in the next part, we will see what this transaction looks like. And when this transaction reaches a Bitcoin network, how is this going to be validated? And uh, then how is uh, basically, uh, you know, Alice uh, see that uh, the same amount is reflected at her address, okay? And what is this concept of public ledger and so on, okay? So first of all, <clears throat> uh, you can think right now, this is like a bank transaction, the typical bank transaction. What do we do? For example, if you think Dave and Alice to be uh, traditional bank users, uh, and if Alice wants money from Dave, uh, some money, Alice would simply give its account address, bank account address, and the Dave would then uh, tell its own bank, okay, uh, basically that you transfer some money from my account <coughs> to to the account of the receiver, and uh, and how this has happened, if both Alice and Dave are of the user of the same bank, just imagine if they are user of the same bank then it's very easy. But if it is not, uh, for example, if Dave and Alice, if they are the account user of the same bank, say bank A, then no problem. Uh, Dave just instruct its bank and, and bank basically, you know, transfer money from Dave's account to Alice's account, okay? And uh, that for that, Dave will make a transaction request to bank and bank will do the, uh, basically transaction and the bank will have its transaction recorded in its ledger okay okay and uh, dave can actually have access to that transaction uh, by downloading the statement and so on which is the part of the ledger okay ba bank have the ledger which is where you have bank maintaining the transaction of all uh, you know users all of its users now if uh, the dave and alice are users of different banks that is also no problem, yeah? For example, Dave is uh, with bank A, and for example, Alice is with uh, bank B, for example. Well, oh, no sorry. problem. Uh, yes, go ahead. Sir, I had a question, like if Alice wants to uh, buy hmm. Bitcoin, hmm. so for, he will uh, take, uh, he will give money to Dave, oh. hmm. correct? So in yes, that yes. case, he should know uh, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for for our purpose, it's not Dave. 
Yes. Yes, yes. For our purpose, the way we have said it, it's uh, L should know Dave. Yeah. L should know. Otherwise, yeah. when it comes to decentralized network or blockchain, how does yeah. it happen then? No, no. But but here you see in, in reality what happens? There is hmm. something called crypto exchange. Yes. Okay. This is nothing to do on blockchain as such. Yeah. Okay. Crypto exchange is what? Hmm. Basically. You trade your uh, bitcoin. Yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. Yeah. That so, uh, conversion so, yeah, is done. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to know Dave. Actually, you basically say that I want to buy, and mm -hmm. there is some seller. Mm -hmm. Crypto exchange will manage that. So, uh, but but in a way, what is happening? You can, if you remove for simplicity the crypto exchange from between, then Alice is basically she, as if like sending its address to the Dave, and Dave is transferring money. You get it. For mm -hmm. simplicity, we are putting it, yeah. But okay. but crypto exchange has nothing to do with blockchain, isn't it? Because okay. these transactions are like uh, transaction involving real money. I mean, the traditional fiat currency, yeah. Okay. So blockchain will not come into the picture. Okay. That's okay. Blockchain yeah, will only in come. That, in that case, we are just using the blockchain network to securely transfer these money. No, I mean, you are using the blockchain network to transfer bitcoins. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's important. Okay. Yeah, bitcoins. Yeah. Yeah, but but okay. crypto exchange is only to transfer huh. your, money, your money fiat, to? fiat currency, fiat right. currency, Indian yeah. rupees or dollar. Do you get it? That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just talking here in the traditional bank. What happened? Traditional way, Alice is uh, having account in bank B. So Dave has in bank A. No problem. Dave make a transaction to the bank A. Then bank A will talk to the bank B. Uh, basically, another transaction here, maybe, and then that's how Alice will receive its money. And and you can think like this, like Bank A and Bank B together, they are able to talk. Like when Dave give the Alice address to its bank, then bank knows which is the right bank for which Alice has having the address with. Then A will, you know, determine that Dave has money, and A will Bank A will actually contact Bank B. And then transfer the money, and that's how Alice get it. So that's what like it's like payment network, isn't? Uh, this is like payment network of the traditional payment networks of banks, and that's how we use uh, to transfer money from one user to other user. That's okay. So similarly, in this case here, uh, in bitcoins, uh, it's the kind of similar. Yeah. So the idea here is that, uh, as I said, Dave is going to make a transaction. And the transaction is like the traditional way of transaction. It will have information about, uh, you know, the address to which the bitcoins to be transferred. The transaction should also convince the Bitcoin network that the 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 Dave has actually some bitcoins. Okay, uh, that also has to be basically ascertained, and then the transaction is validated, and and basically you get the money okay alice will get the money so we will have to see the details of the transaction now the second thing is that when you make this transaction once this transaction is approved by the bitcoin network uh, what is uh, different here is that this transaction will be available for everyone to see okay so that means there is a public ledger on which this transaction will also be posted basically and everyone will get a, get to see it which is different from the traditional bank. As I said, Dave is with bank A and Alice is with bank B. Now, Dave make a transaction, then this transaction is, you know, available in A's ledger. The bank A will have its own ledger and in that ledger, this transaction will be available. B will have again uh, a ledger where the transaction that it receives from A that is available in B's ledger, okay? And Dave can request the details of the ledger by downloading the statement, which is basically constituted a part of the ledger. So Dave cannot see, for example, other transactions that were made by the other user of the bank that Dave cannot see. Dave can only see the transaction that it has uh, made. So therefore, Dave can see a part of that ledger and the bank has a full ledger which is basically consisting of all transactions, all of its users are made. Okay. But this is different here in the Bitcoin. All the users, whoever is making the transaction, 
their transaction is available in the public ledger. So everyone can see. For example, uh, when this transaction will be approved by the Bitcoin network, this, net, this transaction will be available in the public ledger and everyone can see and they will know that there is some user uh, uh, is transferring some kind of some amount of money to another user and so on. What are the details here? We will have to see. And what this public ledger looks like, we will have to see all of this. Okay. So at this point, uh, let's see uh, what the transaction looks like. Okay. And so this is what the transaction looked like. So as I said, this is the transaction T from D to A. Okay. Now this transaction has two parts. One is input part and one is the output part. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to talk about the input for this transaction. Uh, we will talk about this input in the later transaction. But at this point, just imagine uh, this is blank. We are not going to talk about it. But this transaction is going to do what? It's going to transfer money to Alice address. Okay. So what is happening? Uh, it actually put in the output two things. It puts the amount that it wants to transfer to the certain address that uh, uh, Alice has given and the amounts it mention is for example x bitcoins okay and then it writes a small script which we call lock script okay or which we also call script pub key okay and uh, what is this is all about let's see so it basically uh, has the mention uh, the following it says that uh, basically it says that uh, dev is transferring X bitcoins from its own account. Uh, and now this X bitcoins is available for anybody to receive. But the one who want to claim it, the person will have to provide uh, the following information. What? Uh, basically, it, it says that the person who wants to claim X bitcoins, they should provide the pre image of this number. What is this number? This is basically hash of the public key of the Alice. Okay. Now, how is Dave going to get this number in the first place? Uh, nothing difficult because Alice provided the P2PKH address. And remember, from the P2PKH address, Dave can do the reverse of the base 58 encoding and so on and actually arrive at hash of the public key. That was correct. So, once Alice gives this address, Dave's mobile client will do the inversion and get the hash of the public key of the Alice. So it says that anybody who can provide pre-image of the hash of the public key of the Alice, basically one who provide the public key of the Alice, uh, that's one condition. And of course, only Alice knows its own public key. So Alice should be able to do that. Second thing is that uh, once you provide the public key, that person should also have the secret key. And to prove that the person also owns the secret key, the person should create a sample signature using the secret key. And if it if if the person is able to do that correctly, then that person will be a will be the basically the owner of X bitcoins. Do you get it? So right now, what is happening? Dave is transferring, uh, making a transaction, <coughs> and Dave is basically committing that. Uh, by input, it actually telling the network that it has X bitcoins. We will come to that later. But what is the output of the transaction? It says here is X bitcoins, and this X bitcoins is now out of my account. But now this X bitcoins is under the control of somebody who can provide the pre image of this, and then that is actually a public key. And then the person should also have the secret key. And to prove that it has a secret, key, it has to give me it, it has to give a sample signature using that secret key to the network. And anybody who can do that is basically claim the X bitcoins. And Alice can certainly do that. Okay. So let's see. So I mean, we will come to that this part again. So this is the transaction which is uh, made to the network. And suppose network is approving this transaction, and this transaction is now available in the public ledger, and Alice basically also look at this transaction and when alice looks at this uh, lock script or script pub key alice knows for sure that 
Alice actually controls this. And so let's see. Uh, so now Alice, for example, this transaction was approved to the network. And Alice knows that whatever is demanded in this transaction, Alice can provide actually solution to that. And that way Alice can spend the money. Now let's see how this is going to be done. So now there is another user, say Charlie. And Charlie has its own public key and secret key. And this is the Bitcoin address of the Charlie. And Charlie basically also wants some Bitcoins. So Charlie reach out to, for example, Alice this one. And basically gives some money and it wants to receive bitcoins in return now alice is controlling some bitcoins that it has received from Dave, and which is uh, you know this transaction is conforming to that now alice is going to basically uh, you know spend those bitcoins and send it to charlie okay so this transaction was basically confirming that certain x bitcoins are available and those bitcoins are basically under the control of somebody who can have solution to these two problems. And this is like saying that X bitcoins is available at the Alice address because Alice is the person who can actually certainly provide solution to this and nobody else. Okay. Because if you are not Alice, then you don't know Alice publicly. So you basically cannot find the pre image of this number. And if you don't have the public key, you don't likely to have the secret key also, and therefore you cannot produce a signature. So therefore anybody else cannot just claim this, but Alice can certainly claim this Bitcoin. Claim is what right now Alice actually owns. It's like stored in your bank. Okay, that's all. Like, I mean, say in your traditional bank, your money is stored in your bank. Okay, uh, and, and your bank knows because there is a transaction. Say for example, you just open a bank account and you have zero balance in your bank. Now, this is like Alice opening a Bitcoin address. Now then somebody, maybe your father or some relative sent you some money. So they made a transaction uh, saying that they want to transfer money to your account. So that way your bank has a record that somebody made a transaction and that's how uh, the Alice now has, or you has some balance in your bank. So but you have some balance in your bank that is ratified by the fact that somebody made a transaction. That transaction shows that you have some balance, okay? And now uh, you want to spend that money, you want to transfer that money to somebody else, then you have to use your secret key to tell, convince the bank that you really the real owner of the account, and then basically you actually send the money to other account. So this is precisely what is happening here, you see, because there is no one bank here, uh, you have this entire network, everything is public. So Dave put this transaction, this transaction was approved and that way, basically uh, Alice control this money, okay? And uh, why Alice has this money? Because the transaction says that uh, only the person who can provide solution to these problems actually owns this money. And Alice knows that it actually can provide solution to this problem, so therefore, Alice knows that when in the future uh, it is required, uh, it can actually prove, and that way it actually it can spend that money. Until then, it is it's it's her money, and nobody can spend. Okay, and now when the time comes, uh, Charlie, for example, wants some bitcoins from Alice. Alice now actually make another transaction, T from A to C, and this time Alice is going to provide solution to to the network that see this transaction was holding some money and that money is locked by certain problem and that solution to that problem I can provide and that way I actually prove that I actually own that money and now I'm actually also transferring that money to uh, to to Charlie and how do I do that I again control that money under some certain condition and only Charlie can provide solution to that condition and that's how uh, you see Charlie now owns that money so let's see First, this part, so TAC, this is like a full transaction. Now, Alice is proposing this transaction, TA to C, and Alice is, this transaction is going to have two parts, one input and one output. Let's see the input. Input is where, you know, Alice is now convincing that there is certain money available and I own this money and I want to spend that money, okay? So, so therefore, the first thing, uh, the input 
uh, there are several parts to input. I, uh, we are going to finally look at all the parts, but I'm slowly introducing one part at a time. So the two important parts here is the following. One is the transaction ID or Alice is going to, in this field, put something which referred to an old transaction where some money is already locked and Alice is basically controlling those money. So it, re it give reference to this transaction, T from D to A, which was already available in the public ledger. So it says basically when it makes this transaction, it tells the network that please first go to this transaction. Now, when you go to this transaction, basically uh, the net basically arrives at this transaction, isn't it? This is the uh, reference. So, you know, a network arrives at this transaction. Now, and then it says that in this transaction, you see that look at the output. In the output says there is this X bitcoins and it is locked by this condition. And the condition says, uh, uh, you know, if you want to spend, you have to provide the pre-image of it and you have to provide a sample signature. So here it is uh, what the problem was asking. So Alice here put two things. It puts its own public key and it put also a sample signature. And sample signature is created on a message using its secret key. So Alice knows, of course, the corresponding secret key, which it uses here. And what is the message? So sample sign is signature is produced on a message. And what is the message? The message is the transaction itself. It's like you see when you write a check on the check, you actually sign. So similarly, here you have the transaction. So your transaction, you itself, you're going to sign. OK, so the message is basically the transaction, the current transaction that you are making. So you sign that transaction using your secret key and that's your sample signature. So that is the two things you provide. Now listen, now when you make this transaction, the network, when you make this transaction, this transaction goes to the network and network look at the input of this transaction and the input by input, they actually want to verify that Alice really holds some money uh, or not. So the input says you go to this transaction, network will go to that transaction, which is here. In the transactions output, uh, you have these conditions, and it say and it checks that Alice provides this two. So what is network going to do? Network is going to do, do the following thing. It will compute hash of this public key of Alice, and it checks whether this is equal to this part. If it is clear, then it knows that of course uh, the person knows the public key. Then it run the verification algorithm. Verify on using the, on the signature that it has produced. And of course, the public key knows that this public key they're going to use. And the message is what? The transaction that itself they have produced. I mean, on this message, uh, the uh, signature was produced, yeah? So they run the verification algorithm. And if they found that this is correct, then they know that the person who has produced the signature also knows the secret key corresponding to the public key. So with these two conditions, the network knows for sure that it's actually Alice, okay, nobody else. Because only Alice or the right person who owns the public key and the corresponding secret key can only provide these two things. So that way network is convinced that they're talking to the owner uh, of, uh, uh, you know, who is controlling this uh, Bitcoins. That part is done. So transaction is short of approved. Now, what is that Alice wants to do this transaction? That is what given in the output. In the output, what is given? Alice now actually put the X Bitcoins here and it puts the X Bitcoins now under the control of this another log script. And what this log script it says, this money is now out of Alice control and it is under the control of somebody who can provide the previous, uh, uh, you know, pre-image of this number which is basically the public key of Charlie. And, and anybody who holds this public key should also be expected to hold the secret key and they should use the secret key to produce a sample signature. And if they can do that, they basically owns the public. And here, as you can see, this log script certainly uh, shows that Charlie can do that. So therefore, once this transaction is approved by the network, Charlie knows for sure that Charlie now owns this money. So Charlie can definitely send this uh, 
you know equivalent money to alice because it knows that the transaction that alice has proposed okay that shows that uh, the money is now under the control of uh, charlie okay so that's how you see uh, a transaction uh, is is basically transfer money from one account to the other account and these are some informal details of the input and output of the transaction now we go forward and make concrete uh, you know because i just said verbally that uh, this is what it is but now we just have to write it using a bitcoin's lock script uh, or bitcoin script language okay so uh, we will do that but at this point any question here any question because this is a very important part be happy to hear if anybody says that it's all clear or any problem okay all clear. so okay okay great so okay. fine then okay sir yeah sure sure great so so then this is what it is now but now we go ahead and uh, we know what a transaction looks like now we give you, give you more detail uh, because yeah so so here uh, now forget about for a moment the alice charlie or bob uh, dave but just think uh, in terms of uh, two abstract users uh, a and d maybe okay so here you see that there is this bitcoin user a who has the public key pk and sk and d is another user with its own public key and secret key and d is basically you can uh, be another bitcoin user who wish to transfer bitcoins to a i mean at this point you can think of d as dave and a as alice okay and for this d must acquire of course the address of d must acquire the address of the uh, you know receiver and uh, you see d d has the and and as and accordingly d will make the transaction you remember and remember uh, uh, when i said dave made the transaction to alice it says that uh, the x bitcoins is now under the control of somebody who can provide the pre image of uh, you know uh, the hash of the alice public key and, and a sample signature so this all of this are done in a simple uh, you know program i would sort of script okay and the comments are like this okay and this is this is written in a programming language uh, which is basically bitcoin's uh, own script language and it's literally called script okay and what the command looks like these are some operations so first operation is op duplicate the next operation is op operation hash 160 so these are some operations okay and it's like uh, you know the command typical command and then uh, anything in the bracket is basically data so here you have basically hash 160 of public key a so d is going to transfer money to a so a gives its p2pkh address and from the p2pkh address d can obtain the hash of the pka which and hash is basically ripe md sha256 of the public key which is hash 160 exactly so this is just the data hash 160 of pka and then after that there is another operation op equal verify and then there is another operation op check signature verify and we will see what how, how these are going to be compiled and executed okay so so output now instead of uh, informally saying uh, this is under the control of somebody who can provide pre image of a hash and provide a signature we write this simply using this commands and just a simple data and let's see now once this is approved Uh, a knows that basically it owns the uh, you know this this basically a knows that this x bitcoins is now under the control of a by just looking at this log script huh? and uh, now subsequently when a is going to send money to charlie a is going to make a transaction and in that transaction as i said uh, the input is first providing a reference to this transaction and then providing two things its public key and a signature okay so here what is happening that's what is done here as you can see here the transaction id is what hash uh, i mean the reference or is is basically hash of this entire transaction 
so as you can see uh, this is like uh, uh, this is uh, i mean with this the network is easy to it's it's very easy for the network to basically reach this transaction by just looking at the hash of this uh, and that you can see why because in the public ledger there are a lot of transaction so you have a database where where you actually put the transaction as a value i mean as a key value pair where the key is basically the hash of the transaction or like it's like a dictionary data structure yeah so the reference of the transaction is by basically providing hash of the transaction okay you provide and the network by looking at this they can actually reach the entry where they can find the transaction t from d to a and the input is what uh, the a provides basically its own public key and it provides a signature which is basically uh, produced on the message uh, this the transaction itself using its secret key and now see when this transaction is proposed to the network let's see how the network is going to basically validate it so you see now this so we are going to talk about transaction validation very very formally by the network so we are going to validate the transaction t from a to c okay and how is this validated okay so when this transaction comes to the network the network look at the reference trans uh, reference id transaction id and this will bring them here okay and then they look at the output of this transaction which is basically x bitcoins is there and this is locked under this lock script okay and they read the lock script or they basically find the lock script and they write the lock script here uh, i mean we are going to compile this code basically so it's basically <clears throat> op duplicate op hash and i'm just writing abstract way, public key hash which is like hash 160 of pka okay this is the data and then there is another operation op equal and op check sig check sig verify short for that okay and then the corresponding uh, unlock script we call it unlock script or script sig which is provided by alice here and these are consisting of just data so you put the first is basically the signature click okay so as you can see now when this transaction goes to the network from this network goes here this transaction and find this lock script so the network now has two things one is this program and another is this program this is called lock script this is called unlock script this is also called script pub key this is also called script sig now how is network going to compile this <clears throat> there is a simple way to compile this okay uh, this is a as i said this is a written in a specific programming language and this is this programming language is basically stack based so it is a limited uh, it's not a general purpose language it's a limited kind of a language so therefore you see it has to be compiled in a certain way so very abstractly i would put is as follows so the the network is going to put this program both this program side by side so it put unlocking script as signature and public key these data here as part of this and then concatenate with is the public key okay so which is what op duplicate op hash public key hash op equal op check sig all of this so these two lock script it put side by side and now it start compiling the compilation happens what uh, one at a time okay uh, i mean as you execute this program it happens as follows so you look, whenever there is a data you put basically there is a empty stack and you put the data into empty stack and whenever there is a operation you perform that operation so as you can see here the first you start from left to right you see that there is a signature here uh, okay so you put that signature on the stack so that's the operation is done in the second so signature is put here then the arrow will move to the next part and there is again data so if you execute this data will be basically put here and then the arrow will move to the next part that's what i do here for example the public key put here and the arrow moves the data now this is a operation what is this operation the operation says whatever is the top stack element of the data you basically make a duplicate of it make another copy of it so here the top element is the public key of the alice so you basically make a copy of it and put on the top of the stack so as a result of this operation i basically make a copy of this public key and put on it the stack so in the stack now there are three elements first two elements are the public key itself and the signature next now the next operation is op hash 
So OP hash says what? This operation says simply, as you can imagine, it says whatever is the top element, <coughs> you apply hash 160 operation on that element. <coughs> Basically, that means you compute SAR 256 and then apply RIPE MD 166. That's the data and you put that data. So that's what I'm doing here. So <coughs> you apply this two operation on the top stack element, which was the public key, and you put it here. Okay. Now arrow moves to the next again. And there is this public key hash again data. So you are going to put that on the stack data. So you see, you put the data here. <clears throat> now these are the four stack elements. Arrow moves to the next, which is the operation OP equal. The operation says that you should compare the first two top two elements of the stack. If they are equal, then you basically remove them. And if they're not equal, then you throw an error. And as you can see, by this operation, you are basically checking <clears throat> that the Alice who provided this public key is actually the inverse image of this public key hash or not. That's what is being checked, you see. If it is correct, then you see pub this and this are going to be the same. So you are going to simply uh, run this operation and if it is correct, you basically remove them, no error is thrown. And what you are left with, only the top two stack element. <clears throat> so you are done with this and you come, arrow comes to the last operation. The last operation is saying OP checks. And this operation expects that the top two elements are going to be like this of the stack. One should be the public key, another should be the signature, and you should now run the verification algorithm, okay? And if the verification algorithm is correct, then you are basically done. If you're not, then you throw an error. So here, of course, if Alice has provided them correctly, then this is also will be done correctly. And the stack is now empty. Execution is also completed. That means there is no error thrown up. That means Alice has correctly provided the public key and the signature, and therefore network is sort of uh, no sure that the bitcoins were owned by the Alice, and they basically <clears throat> uh, uh, spend that uh, money, and they now transfer as per the wish of the Alice. And what was the wish of the Alice? Alice wants to transfer this to Charlie now, and therefore Alice will put now X bitcoins locked by a lock script which basically mentions that it is now owned by Charlie. And this is again simply, uh, you see, like this, this is going to be simply this. So OP duplicate, OP hash, OP equal verify this. And in the data portion, you put now hash 160 of the public key of the Charlie. And if when, when Alice, when Charlie looks at this log script, Charlie knows that this is actually the hash of its own public key. And Charlie knows, look at this entire script, and Charlie knows that it's only he who can actually provide unlocking script to this and therefore in a way he actually owns these bitcoins okay so so this is how full details of a transaction okay so anybody who wants to make a transaction in the input they will be spending some previous output of a certain transaction which they control and for that and that previous transaction will specify some bitcoins and some lock script and the user will provide an unlock script to that lock script and that way it convinces the network that it is the right user to actually spend this and then in the output actually it says where the money is going to go so it again put the money and put a lock script and the lock script basically gives a con i mean specifies that who is the real user who is going to basically control these bitcoins okay so that's what about the uh, one type of transaction, okay? One type of transaction. So any question at this point? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, please go uh, on slide 15. Yes, yes, go ahead. So you're describing this D sending some money to A and A sending mm -hmm. money to C. Now, mm -hmm. what happens if the amount that A wants to send to C is more than what D mm. sent to A. Yeah. For example, yeah. Yeah, I, I got your point. Perfect. We will come to that now. Uh, it, it could also be that A wants to send some amount which is smaller than X or bigger than X. What is going to happen? That's what the question, yeah? Yes, especially when it contains, uh, if A is, if A sent uh, 5 to C, B sent 5 to C, and uh, C wants to send, say, 7.5 to D. 
yeah so, so we will see that we will see that uh, that's the next part yeah uh, we will see uh, and, and you you can tell me the answer what would be the answer so I'm as you can see you will there be some here, kind of order sorry mm -hmm. yeah yeah what i'm saying is that uh, for example this x is 5 bitcoins yeah yes. okay and alice for example wants to send charlie maybe say 7 bitcoins okay so of course it requires another two bitcoins yeah so yes. what is happening but but alice now knows that somebody earlier maybe somebody m also sends alice some money and that was maybe three bitcoins and that is lying at some transaction so so therefore alice knows that uh, in the ledger i mean it, it in total it actually owns three bitcoins here and five bitcoins here isn't it so then yes. it is going to in the same transaction it going to put one more input here so we will see that in this transaction uh, alice can have multiple inputs so in the second input it's going to put this one m goes to a and it provides the unlock script yeah? okay and then it can put two bitcoins here and it can maybe send the, i mean and in fact suppose it wants to se send seven bitcoins to uh, charlie so it can just it, it it need not put anything here okay that's all so when this transaction go to the network the network will see that alice is trying to spend two two inputs so it will verify both the inputs so first it will look at this input this input will take him take the network to this transaction they see that there is a five bitcoins here locked to this and the corresponding unlock script is given here so they know that five bitcoin all good then they go to the next input and this take them to this transaction there they see that there are three bitcoins there and there is a lock script there and the corresponding unlock script is given by alice and that makes them convinced that alice is the right owner and therefore they see that there is three bitcoins there so in total they know that there are eight bitcoins and out of eight bitcoins they are putting seven bitcoins here so alice is good to go but what about the one bitcoin extra what will happen to that whether it will remain still here uh, how to do that that we will have to see yeah but uh, i mean these are the details that we are going to provide next okay but now you guess you see that yeah okay and and yeah. at this, this point also i guess sir yeah yeah this this and much i guess but hmm. when yes, the, how are we going to form the seven from the three five it could be two plus five or three plus four or three point five yeah plus yeah we will we will see yeah so it can have different way and that is what we are going to do like whether the point is that we have eight bitcoins yeah and from eight we are to going to put seven bitcoins out yeah so that's the main question we have eight bitcoins we have seven bitcoins we want to spend so are we what what are we going to do the one bitcoin are we going to leave it here or leave it here okay we will see that we basically spent both of them okay we don't leave we don't leave any confusion we spend both of them so and so that basically means we are spending both outputs that basically means we are spending eight bitcoins seven bitcoins we transfer to c and one bitcoin we transfer to your own address so you do this and you put hash 160 of public key of alice itself okay as it is that code you put so therefore what is happening uh, alice earlier what putting eight has has eight bitcoins three bitcoins here five bitcoins here now it it actually spent seven bitcoins out of these eight bitcoins so that it you know transfer it to uh, to control under charlie but the one bitcoin it transfer it to own control again now the rest of the one bitcoin now is available at this uh, transaction are you getting it now so in the future when charlie uh, yes. alice again wants to for example spend half a bitcoin then it will make another transaction maybe t goes to a to n in that case it will refer to this transaction and it will say here is the one bitcoin available and i'm going to spend it do you get it sir i had a confusion like t uh, you for the seven suppose uh, like uh, this person dave asked for five 
bitcoins hmm. okay and now alice uh, is uh, was initially giving five bitcoins now hmm. later like uh, as uh, per, uh, the other person question that if suppose he wants seven hmm. so you said that uh, uh, another script he is going to write another input hmm. he is going to give now this hmm. input this three he is taking from the other one other person these three three bitcoins no are no th these three bitcoins are also alice owns i mean alice owns means what some okay. other user m okay uh, you know earlier transferred okay. a these three bitcoins so therefore it's like it's a's bank. balance okay, okay yeah. balance. so for example in in your bank for example there are 1000 rupees i mean you might have received this 1000 uh, you know some part of it from some user some part of it from other user but your bank basically shows in total you have 100 1000 uh, rupees available isn't it and you tell bank that okay i want to transfer 500 out of 1000 so bank simply transfer 500 and rest 500 is available in your bank but yeah, yeah. those 1000 came from different uh, transactions yeah but in total you have this and this is what is happening here in the bitcoin uh, because this ledger is public so uh, in 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 the typical bank it's very easy you have transfer something and rest is left but here, these are one transaction which says three bitcoins is available here. Another transaction says five bitcoins is available here. So if you want to do seven bitcoins, you cannot take it like five from here, two from here. And then later you say, uh, I mean, one bitcoin I always refer to here. It could have been like you take three bitcoins here, four bitcoins here, and one is left here. And then you later say I trans uh, refer to this whenever I uh, spend the rest of the one bitcoin that is not going to happen what is happening here that you whenever you are spending your sum output you have to spend in full okay so here you have spending both this that means you spend all of them full so eight okay out and and you make a transaction uh, you spend both of them that means you spend eight bitcoins seven bitcoins you transfer to another but the one bitcoin you transfer to your own control again okay and yes. this one bitcoin now is available under your control, but what is the uh, evidence for that? The evidence is this transaction. Okay, so in the future, when you want to again say transfer half a Bitcoin from here, you have to refer to this transaction. Okay, not these are now considered spent. Okay, so, uh, uh, we will come to more of it. Yeah, we will we'll, we'll get to see more of it. Yeah, but right now, uh, uh, this is what we see the lock script and unlock script and now let's go ahead. Uh, that's the next question that we are actually going to address. Okay, but even before we go that, uh, yeah, just uh, again, quick thing. Uh, this is kind of odd here. Uh, so you remember uh, the mainnet and testnet. Uh, so you you can make all this transaction on both mainnet and te testnet, and and uh, it's just that the testnet is like the simulation of the mainnet, and whatever you see on the mainnet, you can also see on the testnet. I mean, similar kind of things. And uh, so, as I said, uh, Alice is a user who send money, make a transaction, and that transaction basically is to transfer money from Alice to, say, for example, Charlie. And I said that those transactions are available in the public ledger. Anybody can see. So therefore, uh, uh, anybody can see means what? Uh, you need some kind of a nice uh, user interface to see this. So uh, on this mainnet, there are thousands of transactions happening thousands of transactions happening, okay? So all of these transactions are available on the network, uh, public ledger. So you want to see all of them. So therefore you need some some sort of a search engine, okay? Like we have a Google search engine, which is uh, works for all, okay? Uh, all transaction on the network, all queries on the network, browsing on the network. Similarly, uh, you see, uh, Bitcoin network is itself is like an internet, it's also a network. And there are special kind of transaction happening on this network. So you also have a search engine for that. And these are called basically blockchain explorer. So these are links to those explorer. Uh, we, you can go to any of these are hyperlinked. You can go to any of these explorer and there you can actually see all the transactions which are happening. Uh, and we will actually see some of them real. Similarly, there are explorer for also the testnet. So when you make a transaction on the testnet, uh, you will see that uh, you can see all the details of the transaction using some of this explorer okay but now coming so back we, to your can we create yeah. our own blockchain application uh, in this network 
yes yes we can create for example uh, we will see that uh, the how to create uh, you i mean if you want to create a application on the network you can do that uh, definitely no problem you all you have to do is basically you i mean you have to download uh, the bitcoin core software and and then you can write some application okay and what about implementing uh, these uh, algorithms like we can we uh, although these are fixed of bitcoin algorithm uh, bitcoin for uh, this stage in the morning in the session last session ecdsa like can we modify these algorithms no no see uh, because uh, these are fixed why fixed because you see when 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 i said the ne- oh sorry the network is created using that right yeah for example when when uh, alice is sending a transaction okay alice sending a transaction to the network that transaction for example t a goes to c that transaction goes to every uh, computer that you see here usually we call them miner i mean you can also set up your own computer and you can just receive all the transaction okay i mean you can download a core software of your i mean you can attach your for example you have your desktop and you can attach your desktop to this network all you have to do is download a bitcoin core software okay and run the bitcoin and that way your 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 desktop is basically attached uh, to this peer to peer network so anybody who is sending this transaction this transaction gets propagated and available for everyone to see you will also receive this transaction then okay so you see the transaction now what are you going to do with the transaction that uh, we will see i said there is another kind of user who will work okay and work to get bitcoins so those users are called miners so the miners basically all of them actually validate this transaction when you validate this transaction means what you basically look at the input of this transaction then input says there is a reference transaction old transaction you go to that transaction there is some log script uh, of that old transaction that you fetch from this you take the input put the log script and unlock script together and then run this and when running this is like basically computing some hash computation signature verification algorithm so that you cannot change all the signature verification is the same algorithm okay these are standard you cannot write something if you if you use something else that transaction will be invalid transaction because you haven't used the proper signatures is that okay yeah yeah uh, and and why they do that so on we will of course uh, i'm sure uh, distributed consensus you have covered uh, there it's part of that yeah <clears throat> okay so now coming to other kind of transaction uh, other details on the transaction we just have looked at a very very simple kind of a transaction okay so as i said uh, we can have we we saw one input one output but we can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs in a transaction so for example here i have a tra- example of a transaction where there are multiple inputs and a single output so that basically means this user b as you can see user b is making a transaction and it wants to transfer money to user c okay and it actually pulling uh, so b might be having uh, you know uh, bitcoins that it controls but those are available at several previous transaction and it might just put all of them together at one point pull all of them together and that's where it has multiple inputs so for example here it has three inputs so that basically means that there was a previously some transaction uh, which was which was basically made by the user a1 and it transferred some money to b and at that transaction some bitcoins is available which user b controls so it b refers to that transaction and in that transaction there is some uh, you know uh, lock script and the corresponding unlock script uh, the user b is providing and that unlock script is what user is providing its public key and the signature on this transaction uh, you know and and that is basically you know signed using the corresponding secret key okay now now then uh, b is also pulling uh you know referring to another transaction previously where b has received from a2 so it referring to that transaction and that also basically has lock script and the corresponding unlock script is this so it has now basically pulling three previous transaction okay and uh, so therefore three inputs 
and and at each of this previous transaction in the output may be certain bitcoins uh, were available and it has actually spent all of them okay maybe two bitcoins here three bitcoins here maybe one bitcoin here so put together six bitcoins it has so it spent all of them and it actually spends maybe six bitcoins complete to the pkc okay that's one thing okay now you can see that uh, the unlock script looks like same for all of them that's not the case actually uh, i mean the public key is is basically same okay but but the message that uh, you see i said the message is basically the transaction itself but at the later point when we create the signature i have simply said the you have to sign this transaction but we will see that the transaction uh, the way we tra sign the transaction uh, you will see that uh, these messages are derived from the transaction and the, the way they are derived uh, these messages are going to be different that's one thing also another point uh, it may happen that in the b's wallet okay if you look at the wallet of b b has two public key and secret key i mean two pair of keys uh, so you have pk1 uh, i mean pkb skb and pk2b and sk2b okay and maybe another key maybe uh, maybe also pkb3 skb3 and it may be the case that b have used different key pairs previously to receive money from a1 so in that case what if you look at t a1 b if you look at its corresponding lock script okay i mean the, if you look at the output uh, there basically the money was locked using the pkb1 in ta 2b maybe the money was locked using the second public key of the b and in the this transaction maybe it is locked using this so in that case what is happening you in the unlock script it will be like this isn't it so basically three different unlock script okay but the important thing is that uh, all of these uh, are owned by b so therefore a b is basically able to convince okay so that's multi inputs and single output again there could be multi inputs multiple outputs so here as you can see that we write like this so b is pulling in uh, its previous uh, you know bitcoins from different sources and then it's transferring in one go to two users c1 and c2 so that's what i will write so these are three inputs and they may be total six bitcoins and then maybe four bitcoins it transfer to user pkc1 and two bitcoins it transfer to pkc2 and pkc2 perhaps is perhaps uh, under the control of b okay so that is a possibility yeah so that's how you see multi inputs and multiple outputs okay now uh, when we okay now when we have multiple inputs multiple outputs so far you had a sense that as if when we were yeah let's me put it here hope this point is clear now the next is you had a point I mean, so far we were looking at only one output so i mean we we seems to have this idea that when i'm pulling in uh, some bitcoins from a previous transaction as if that transaction has only one output okay but as you can see later for example when you made this transaction and later for example c1 wants to transfer money maybe c1 wants to uh, you know make a transaction to some another user maybe d1 then c1 has some money already available here so it wants to refer to this transaction but this transaction has two outputs so but c1 only owns this doesn't own this so therefore when c1 makes a transaction uh, and it wants to refer to this transaction and it wants to say that i want to i, I own this and i want to spend that so c1 has to actually give uh, you know reference to not only the transaction but also which output of the transaction that it wants to spend okay so in that case that's basically uh, what we have to see so here is the example as you see uh, this is the transaction c1 wants to for example spend this one c1 owns this one and c1 make a transaction here c1 is transferring money to d user 
So C1 refer in the input and the transaction ID, which is this one. But now it also put another entry and that's how we see now another entry of the input. So far we saw that input has only two parts, transaction ID and the unlock script. Now we have something called serial number, okay? And in the serial number, it specifies zero. Zero basically means the zeroth output. So usually what happens when you make a transaction, if there are multiple outputs, the first output has a serial number zero, the second output has a serial number one. If there is another output, then it has the serial number two and so on. So therefore you see that uh, here in this case, C1 uh, is controlling this. So C1 is referring to this transaction in the serial number it put once and it provides the unlock script here. And of course, then it, uh, this is basically by which it spends and it transfer X1 bitcoins maybe to the PKD. Okay, that's what it is. I hope this is clear. Serial number is part is clear. Multi inputs, multi outputs and all of this. Next we go. This is about, as I'm saying, consuming UTXO amounts in its entirety. Basically the outputs has to be consumed in its entirety. Okay, so <clears throat> what is happening here? So let's look at this, okay. Uh, so you see, this was the transaction and this money is under the control of C1, X1 Bitcoins, okay. Now, so basically uh, C1 wants to spend this money and, but, but C1 want to transfer say X Bitcoins and X is smaller than X1. So X1 Bitcoins here, which is it controls, but it wants to now transfer only X Bitcoins. So what it is going to do with X1 minus X? The idea is that you have to spend this money in entirety. So C1 make a transaction to D, it refers to this transaction, which is here. Serial number is zero, that means it wants to spend this. This is what it controls. It provides the unlock script. And then X Bitcoins, it transferred to D, and the rest of the bitcoins x1 minus x bitcoins that it also put in the second output of the transaction where it puts that this bitcoins is under the control of its own address pkc1 so it again puts the pkc1 or it can actually put some other address which it controls okay but the important thing is that the rest of the bitcoins is now available uh, at this transaction if in the later future if c1 wants to again spend these bitcoins now it has to refer to this transaction. This is now completely spent, okay? So that's about uh, uh, what we discussed earlier. Now, next is the question of transaction P. When you make this transaction, okay? When you make this transaction, this transaction goes to the network. There are, my, there are these not network entities, they receive your transaction and then they actually validate this transaction. And validation means what? As you see, it requires them to run, uh, you know, hash functions, signatures, and so on. And so therefore, one has to pay them back, okay? But how this payment happens and so on, uh, we will see that that is what the part of Bitcoin's distributed uh, consensus uh, mechanism. But at this point, imagine, like you make a transaction to the bank, uh, through bank, in the traditional sense, you actually pay, pay some fee, okay, transaction fee. Similarly, in the Bitcoins, when you make a transaction, you have to pay some fee, okay. Now, who do you give the fee? In the traditional, you give the fee to your bank, but here, it's the Bitcoin network, you make a transaction to the Bitcoin network, but the fee, I mean, who is going to get the fee from you, okay? So that part, as a user, you don't have to worry about. You just have to keep aside a little amount of fee Okay, uh, and that fee, where it goes, you don't have to worry about. You just have to give that fee and how that fee is done, okay? And it's very easy. So what happens? Uh, you have X Bitcoins here and you want to spend X1 Bitcoins and the X minus, X1 minus X Bitcoins, uh, sorry. Yeah, so you have, for example, here, uh, this is the example here, another, yeah. So for example, here, uh, B has transferred money to C and C has basically in total of X Bitcoins, okay? Now, 
now oh this is slightly problem here this is under the control of c yeah so this transaction is from c okay uh, okay okay so let me i i want to yeah maybe i wait okay so here this is the multiple uh, you see here b is sending money to c and b is sending x bitcoins to c okay that's one thing but where is the fee this transaction has some fee where is that so that is what uh, let me show you here uh, by this transaction uh, so this is another transaction for example b sending money to c1 c2 so b sending uh, pulling money from its previous resources and then it's sending x1 bitcoins to c1 and x2 bitcoins to c2 but where is the fee also here okay the idea is that uh, you see that the amount that it's spending okay uh, uh, this is uh, we we just have to yeah, okay for a moment just uh, uh, just assume uh, you see uh, i mean just assume that this was under the control of b okay just assume this one. so that makes it clear everything so this is b so this money is under the control of b okay and uh, for a moment uh, Think like this b is basically spending this money so b is basically referring to b goes to c okay so there's, there's only one input yeah b is basically spending this money because b is holding this money here yeah so as you can see my refs b goes to b i mean b has some money uh, which is available at different resources and it actually pulled all of them together and actually put it to its one account okay so b controls this money and then B wants to send this money to C1, C2, maybe. C1 is maybe another address, C2 may be under the control of B. But the point here is that for this transaction, there has to be a fee. So what happens is that uh, you put X1 Bitcoins to C1, and then you basically have X1 bit. you had X Bitcoins. So X1 Bitcoins you wants to transfer to C1. Then you have X minus X1 Bitcoins with you. But then you have to also pay some fee, okay? So the fee, you know how, I mean, some fee that you have to pay. So therefore what you do, uh, the X minus X1 can be written as, like, as if like uh, fee plus X minus X1 minus fee, that amount, yeah? I mean, this is fee and this is the rest of the amount. So in a sense, if I call this amount as X2, okay? then you simply mention x1 and x2 here and you don't mention the fee amount i mean you don't put fee to somebody else okay so in a sense for example if x was 10 okay and you are you are going to put say six bitcoins here that means four is left with you and suppose you want to pay 0 0.5 bitcoins as a fee then you put x2 bitcoins as what how much you're going to put you're going to put it at how much 3.5 because you know that 6 plus 3.5 is 9.5 you were having 10 bitcoins here which you're completely spending you have specified six bitcoins going to be the c1 3.5 bitcoins going to the c2 that means what still 9.5 what about the 0.5 you haven't mentioned here that means you haven't mentioned means what that those 0.5 bitcoins will go as a fee that's what you're committing okay so if your x is here then you put x1 x2 that means x is basically equal to x1 plus x2 plus fee so x minus x1 plus x2 is what your fee that you are committing okay and where this fee goes you don't have to worry about at this point uh, you just know that if you put that fee you commit for that fee then your transaction is perhaps going to be validated pretty soon it is possible that you might put fee as zero okay in that case also your transaction will finally be approved by the network but it might take a lot of time maybe network is uh, the people in the network may not be very interested in validating your transaction because you haven't put any fee but believe me even if you don't put fee your transaction is eventually going to be uh, approved but it might take a lot of time 
okay okay <clears throat> so that's one thing now here is a real transaction uh, that we have gotten from the screenshot of the real transaction from explorer okay sir, so yes yes sir, the previous slide sir yes yes please tell me sir uh, suppose for the first transaction the six uh, has been spent and as you mm -hmm. told at 0.5 was the transaction fee that is being, being deducted so that mm -hmm. is why 3.5 but for this transaction also the fee is going to be deducted no i'm, I'm talking about only uh, fee for this transaction and what okay. about this because this... previous transaction eh? yeah, yeah no, we have, the we have, previous we have transaction to... already deducted oh, so yeah. for the no, pre no, previous transaction paid. also has a when this transaction was uh, proposed okay that transaction together. also has paid some fee yeah okay that is a together calculated cost okay. yeah because there may be you see when you pull together from here that was maybe total y amount was there yeah and you put x amount here that means y minus x was a fee you get it yes sir. i mean yeah yeah so this is a real transaction here uh we can see in the explorer for example uh okay Okay, I have to, yeah. So as you can see here, uh, you see this transaction. Uh, okay, I, I just have looked at in the Explorer and you see this is uh, the hash as basically, I mean, you can think of as if here, T goes to A goes to B and C, just imagine. So this is a transaction and the hash of this transaction is basically here and this is basically the address of a this is so here you see in this transaction the some user a uh, you know basically transferring money to some two users b and c so therefore this has single input and two outputs and as you can see the input uh, this transaction input it was trying to spend this much money 0 0.0718165 btc and then out of this it transferred this amount of money to one address and this amount of money to other address and as you can see both these addresses starting with one so these are addresses on the main net and and you can see that the fee is what fee will be this minus some of these and as you can see the fee is basically as you can see here which is here and you can see that this amount this amount these two amounts plus the fee is actually the amount on the right you can do the calculation so as you can see they just specify that this is the input amount these are the two output amounts and uh, this minus the sum of this is basically the fee so where the fee goes we don't have to worry at this point now look at the input i can see the input also and in the input uh, this user a is giving uh, you know the two parts uh, the inputs is basically uh, has the unlock script and the unlock script is the following one is the signature this is the ecds signature and this is the public key and this input was spending a previous output you know this transaction was referring to something and the previous output uh, or the lock script was this so this is what the lock script op duplicate op hash there was some hash of the public key given and this is op equal ver verify and op check seek okay this is the previous uh, log script and uh, and and the this is the hash of some public key and the public key is actually you provide as the unlock script and under the corresponding secret key you produce the signature that is the input now this log script has two outputs so we can see also the outputs here so these outputs are in zero as the first output index one as the second output so index zero is basically this Bitcoin and it is locked under this lock script. As you see, again, this is the public key. And similarly, the second output is basically this Bitcoins is locked under this public key. Okay. And the second output has index serial number one. Okay. So this is the complete, uh, for example. So at this point, maybe I give you, yeah, maybe I want to know at this point, uh, like if anybody has seen Bitcoin Explorers, do you have idea about Bitcoin Explorer? I mean, I, I just want to know, like if anybody knows. Uh, yeah, I visited it. Okay. How about somebody else? Anybody?
okay so i i take it as a sort of a okay okay so fine so maybe i'll i'll just give you a quick sense of whatever we have done right now just to visit them and uh, basically uh, you see uh, have a look at them quickly okay so let me screen cast uh, my screen to my ipad just a minute example i some of the explorers uh, i had some point yeah so you see these are a bitcoin explorer uh, these are hyperlinked i can just go to one of them so I just go to one of them <coughs> yeah this is one 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 of these explorers and uh, yeah so as you can see uh, they are like Engine to do, uh, for example, Bitcoin. Uh, go to the Bitcoin and go. You can also go to the testnet. Okay, so let me go. I mean, we just uh, be here in the Bitcoin and, and 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 you see life. Uh, we will come to here block and so on. But this is these are transaction. So I mean, the transaction that people are any of this transaction. Example, this has just happened. A uh, few minutes back, uh, in a few seconds back. Also. Okay, so let me pick uh, a slightly older transaction. It's taking a bit of time. Just a minute. Yeah. So. Let's go to slightly older transaction. And as you can see in the left, these are hashes of the transaction. So let me click on this transaction. Okay. Let me click this transaction and let's go to the transaction. Mm -hmm. See, this is the transaction. And as, the way we have seen this transaction, the moment you see, you see there is one input and three outputs. Okay. So some user, and, and as you can see, the did I click it? I don't know. Okay. But anyway, you, you see this transaction. The address here is starting BC1. Uh, this address is basically obtained by applying BET32 encoding. This address is spending this and it click and then fourth is the fee. And these it's spending to these accounts. So, for example, the this punch it's sending to this address, and as you can see, this address is starting with three. That means it is an address which is a pay to script hash. That means this address is controlled by some sort of a script. Okay. And that and this is B one, and it's likely that's the address uh, which is controlled by the user. Okay, uh, and perhaps this is the change that it is actually sending to its own address, uh, you know, a new address which is controlled by itself. Okay, now you can go to, uh, you can go to basically the all the input details and all the output details. So as you can see here, if you go down the details. You see, this is the input, and in the input, you see that. This is, this is the unlocks script that provide basically spend that money. So your voice three outputs, breaking. the outputs has much under those outputs. Yeah, my voice is breaking. Uh, just a minute, the slightness. Is it better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. So, I do in the network. So, these three outputs, as you can see, uh, 
you see you are going to lock these three outputs these amounts under different lock scripts and the lock scripts are slightly different as you can see it's not the uh, the usual lock script that we have seen op duplicate op hash then the data then op uh, you know hash function and and then op equal verify and op check signature here in fact you see op hash 160 some data and op equal that's all so what are these scripts what does it mean we have to see that means what you can lock your data under different lock scripts okay. here you can see it different okay different than what you're seeing okay so that basically means that when you make uh, uh you know some outputs and you you know you know you, you lock some bitcoin you can lock those bitcoin under different kind of block script we one kind it's uh, here yeah let's get back to our slide okay fine okay just a minute let me just <clears throat> okay so at this point uh we now uh, are done with the uh, uh, you, you know the entirety of the transactions and uh, you see the transaction the structure of the transaction there are multiple inputs multiple outputs how do you spend the transaction and uh, and and then when you create bitcoins the one kind of log script that we have seen okay but at this point now we just have to move ahead and uh, we will have to uh, you know go to the point that when such a transaction goes to the network uh, some of these uh, i mean these transactions are going to picked up by the network validated by the network but now we have to see uh, how how this validation happens okay i mean we saw a part of it but then uh, we will have to see that uh, who does this validation because I saw that in the as part of the network, there are several PCs that I've listed, uh, how they interact with each other, and why do they basically validate what is in return and so on. All of this we have to see. Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, we see here uh, that uh, we we at this point uh, we want to talk a bit more about the Bitcoin ledger, and and uh, which is maintained by every peer in the network and what is world state and so on okay so so at this point you see a uh, couple of uh, uh, quick pictures here so for example here as you can see uh, a network receives a transaction and as you can see t1 is the transaction and this basically says that t1 has two previous inputs that it wants to spend and after spending it creates three outputs okay so this transaction when it is approved uh, by the network it is put in a public ledger but then there is also a world state of the ledger where we see the following okay i mean this transaction when it is approved it is put into the ledger as a whole okay and how do you retrieve that transaction you can use the hash of the transaction to basically reach that entry but then there is also a, a world state uh, of of your ledger and that has the following entries okay with respect to every transaction that is approved by the network and for example here once this is approved a world state has a simple entry so this transaction has three outputs that is created so you will see that three entries are basically uh, i'm just putting a very simplified view three entries are basically added to the world state what are these three entries uh, all these three entries basically are uh, having a certain uh, component common which is what the hash of the transaction and then there are three entries basically you have uh, the serial number gives those three entries 0 1 2 and then the status of these three outputs that means this transaction is just created and these bitcoins or uh, bitcoins which are available at these three addresses they are currently unspent that means nobody has just spent them they are currently unspent so this is now suppose uh, 
uh, the user who controls this bitcoins want to spend it so it makes a transaction t2 and it says that i am going to basically this is hash of t1 and 0 that means it says that as an input i am going to spend this output okay so it actually make a transaction where it refers to this transaction uh, hash of t1 and the serial number 0 that basically means that it's referring to this b1 output and then it wants to create two outputs c1 and c2 so when t2 is basically approved by the network this is also added to the ledger as it is but in the world state there is some change happening what is the change happening you see in the world state it says that the entry i mean once the t2 is approved uh, this input is consumed and hash of t10 will give me this entry in the world state and there was this unspent earlier but once t2 is consumed this is now spent so the world state now basically put a spent here uh, to this entry okay and these two are still unspent these two entries but it also now created two more unspent entries because of the hash uh, because of the transaction t2 so it put hash of t2 0 that means c1 is unspent and this is also unspent c2 now later uh, for example uh, another transaction is made and this transaction is trying to spend two uh, you know some user may be controlling this input and and this in this output also so it will refer to for example hash of t1 and 2 and this will refer hash of t2 and 0 so that means it trying to spend b2 and c1 once and, and it creates three outputs so this transaction when is approved by the network t3 as a whole added to the ledger but in the world state what happens you see world state what happens uh, there are some changes happens so b3 and c1 is now spent so you actually make b3 and c1 from unspent to spent and because of the hash uh, i mean the transaction t3 three new entries are created so this is unspent 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 yeah and this is like world state so this world state is uh, so now you can see the public ledger has two parts one is the ledger itself where you have all the transaction after approval you keep them as it is but then there is also a world state part where you have some sort of a uh, you know summary of the transaction and you see uh, and that is that is very useful okay for example at a later point if somebody makes a transaction t4 and it's tried to consume for example it tried to refer to for example h t1 and it tries to refer to zero and and it, it says that it wants to consume this one so so the network immediately doesn't go to the t4 itself it goes i mean it, it doesn't go to the t1 itself and just try to see uh, the output there it actually first go to the world state itself first and 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 looking at this entry they go to this here and then they see that there is already spent here so that means this user who is making this transaction t4 try to double spend here i mean it tries to consume as some entry which is already spent so there is no money there whatever that money was already spent so therefore the network will immediately uh, discard this transaction because it knows in the world state uh, this entry corresponding to entry which is already spent so you cannot uh, spend it okay so world state is but but now for example when this t3 was uh, put up uh, this referred to these two transaction so this was the world state previously and these two transaction basically corresponding to these two entries and these two entries are unspent so they know that uh, network knows that t3 is trying to spend uh, uh, outputs which are unspent so then they proceed further and then they go to t1 and t2 they go to the ledger and go actually and get the t1 and t2 complete details and see the outputs uh, the lock script okay and then they expect that t3 is providing the corresponding uh, unlock scripts yeah okay so in a sense now we have uh, you know uh, this is how the network basically moves okay so some user uh, at any point 
the network has the you know the network has two parts one is the ledger the network is maintaining the ledger where the transaction full details are available and the other is basically the world state okay which is short of a summary on the ledger now once a user make a transaction say t3 which is trying to spend for example this one and this one then once this transaction is made to the uh, network the network consult the world state and the t3 says that it wants to spend these two and the world state says these are still unspent so they're good to go then they go to using these two they go to the ledger and the ledger they see the complete details of the transaction and they go to the corresponding outputs using the serial number okay and then they see the lock script there and this then they expect that the t3 has provided the corresponding unlock script and if it is done if it is provided correctly the network is approving this transaction t3 and then they put t3 in the ledger so the ledger is updated from here to here t3 is added but the world state is updated as follows in the world state those two inputs are now considered as spent and t3 is uh, new three new entries are basically added about t3 which are showing as corresponding unspent and that's how basically uh, networks ledger and world state is updated okay now <clears throat> now the point is that so saying like network as a whole updating but now we have to see uh, this network is a peer to peer network so basically the individual my net my transaction when i'm proposing that goes to some uh, you know i mean when i say my transaction i propose to the network this transaction is actually going to all the nodes of the network and now we want to see that how these nodes are going to work together to approve this transaction that is important okay so that's what we are slowly getting into the working of the bitcoin network okay so as you can see this picture very clearly so here you have a user u here is a user v and this is the user w and this is the current state of the network so that means these are the total number of transaction approved by the network so this is ledger this is the world state and three new transactions are proposed now these three transactions are proposed by three different users now this will go to the main network and the main network will have now basically uh, the main network has basically all these different nodes now these three different nodes will receive i mean all of these nodes will receive these three different transaction so because this is a peer to peer network i might i mean this is maybe the nearest node so my transaction will go to this node and this node maybe it, it's a it's a computer which is run by you okay so you receive basically this transaction and once you receive this transaction you are also going to propagate this transaction to all the other nodes similarly uh, so that way after a point quickly these three transaction may be first received by three different nodes but because of the peer to peer network structure after few seconds all of these node will have all of these three transaction but maybe in different order for example this might have received tw first tu second tv third this node might have received tv first tu second and tw later so all of them have three different transaction in different orders maybe now all of these nodes will have to validate this transaction all of them have to do validate and they also have to agree on a order like which one was came first and so on and they have to then uh, you know basically apply the validation in that sequence and and basically execute as per the requirement of the transaction and this is quite a difficult task yeah because uh, the network has lot of imperfection uh, you know the propagation can be slow some node can receive something but delay it, the propagation so you have all kind of imperfection but in the face of this imperfection the nodes have to agree on all of these transactions okay in in in, in a particular order and that's what the that's where the bitcoin's distributed consensus protocol will come into picture okay so we will talk about this consensus picture okay so the idea here is that now this three transaction has come to the network they come in different orders and these nodes now have to validate this transaction uh, and that they can do 
but now they have to agree on the order of this transaction and say they finally agree on this order say tw first tv second and tu later that means what the ledger and the vault state will have to update accordingly so tw will go here first and as per tw the vault state will change then after that tv will add it to the ledger and as per tv vault state will update again and then next tu will update into this and as per the tu the vault state will update again so this order they have to agree upon and how is this agreed upon is what bitcoin's distributed consensus network we talk about okay so at this point maybe we can take another 10 minutes break and uh, and, and then we next we can start with bitcoin's distributed consensus protocol and we can quickly uh, you know discuss that is that okay uh, yes sir yes sir